I look stoned, don't I? Hey, I'm Royal Yoakum, and you're watching Graveyard Cars. Okay, so today is day zero of the 32 days that the body man had to get the car to me. The way we kind of did that is the body shop got 30 days, Pink gets 30 days, Dave's got 30 days. Where we're at right now is we have the roof, deck lid, hood, body work, primer already. Uh, the guys stayed late last night and got the whole right side completely done. So I came in early this morning, went ahead and got primer on it. The primer that we use takes like seven to 10 days to dry. So it's kind of critical to get stuff primed as quick as possible. Everything looks really good. It'll just need a block and then probably one more primer and then we'll be ready to start going to color. This time on Graveyard Cars. For the home resto tech on a budget, Dave shows us how to easily restore your own body tags. Pretty easy thing to do, it saves you a ton of money. Alyssa finally gets to help with a firepower CUDA, prepping the roof and deck lid for paint. Dave does some last minute business on box 383 Challenger RT. And with just 60 days left until its deadline, Mark finally reveals what the super secretive Operation Firepower really is. Here, let me let the cat out of the bag. Now you know. What is that? That's my point. Coming up on this episode of Graveyard Cars. They're coming, they're coming to get you, Barbara. It has been established that the cranberry dead are coming back to life. I'm Mark Warman, and together we bring dead muscle cars back to life to exactly the way they were on the day they were born. In case you got sidetracked looking for a clevis pen, here's what you missed. To stay on schedule and give Will enough time to paint, the ghouls teamed up to get the firepower CUDA through bodywork in record time. Despite Alyssa's best efforts to help, she was rerouted to the graveyard to take out a colony of wasps. And when fans and new Hellcat owners stopped by, Mark couldn't resist the temptation to dynamometer test it against our 69 Daytona, allowing Mark to record real world numbers in a head to head smackdown. Spoiler, the Hellcat won. With his own deadline looming, it's up to Will to get the rest of the firepower car ready for paint while wondering when Mark is going to reveal its true purpose. What we have here is the 1970 Dodge Challenger emblem. For you guys that got beautiful emblems on your car, the chrome and everything's good, but all the paint's flaking off. We run into that a lot here at GYC. As you can see, this one here isn't perfect, but I was kind of using it as a demonstration. But you can see where it's really faded out bad, but the chrome is actually in really good condition. A way to restore this so you don't have to actually replace your body tag. Really simple. I'll kind of show it to you here with a rattle can and uh, the tag. I, I go ahead and stick it in a piece of cardboard like that to kind of hold it in place so it doesn't flop around. And what you'll need is a little bit of lacquer thinner. And what I like to do is kind of fold a paper towel into a piece of cardboard so I got a flat surface. The whole object is we're gonna spray paint the entire body tag. You wanna make sure you can kind of get on the edges and all the little cracks and the holes and stuff all the way around. And I'm using a, a semi-flat black paint here. As you can see, it's just all kind of blacked out, which looks kind of cool if you're into that kind of deal. But we're gonna go ahead and let it sit here for a couple minutes. I just wanna kind of move it around in the light to make sure I don't see any chrome. So it looks like I got good coverage on it. And we'll give it a couple minutes and then we'll wipe it off. All right, we're back. We waited a few minutes. It's got a nice little sheen to it. You can kind of tell that it's kind of glazed over, but it's not totally dry. Put a little bit of lacquer thinner on this flat surface like this here. Then if you wipe it over, all your chrome will be in really good condition like it was. And you'll see that black paint coming off. And hopefully I didn't wait too long. Oh, it's working. You can kind of wipe that off there and you want to keep it nice and flat. So if you go too much, you'll end up taking it off of there. Looks pretty darn good. So all your shadows intact all around the bottom, inside all the script and on the top all the way around, but your chrome is exposed. 
Looks good, and then once that completely dries, you can go over it with a little bit of chrome polish and really get that shine up, and it'll take up any little, you know, spots that you might have missed by wiping it over, so. Pretty easy thing to do, it saves you a ton of money. Uh, these body tags are getting really expensive now, so if you can save them, it's worth saving. I ran and grabbed Josh, he's uh, one of our new body men here. He's doing most of the, the filler work, the plastic repair, so smoothing out the panels. Uh, built him a nice little room out back. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> pretty, uh. pretty excited, huh? Oh, look at that. Yeah, yeah. Oh boy. When we moved in here to Catherine Street, 22,000 square foot building, huge parking lot, about two and a half acres. Never imagined filling it. We've been here a year and a half and it's full. <laughs> One of the things that we had done when we first moved in was we built a 30 by 30 room that was covered and protected from the elements. It was designed to be our engine room for when we take a drivetrain out of a car, we'd put it inside that room, keep it dry out of the elements and safe until we could get to restoring it. And what's happened subsequently is we brought in 20 or 30 more cars, the lot's full, we have started investing in some racking, some shelving, and that shelving has allowed us to be able to take all of the engines that were in that room and put them on shelves individually. So now we're taking advantage of the up space, the straight up in the air space underneath the awning. That left the 30 by 30 room open, and that's where I'm at right now. A few months ago, we got on the project of getting this room converted into what you call a mud room or a dirty room. It's where you could do your sanding or your filler. All the ugly stuff that we do now in the body shop that just causes dust to go throughout the building and you can't control it will now be out in this controlled environment of 30 by 30. These are all high output halogen LED lights. They completely go around the inside of the building. When a car is on a rotisserie, the center point is about here. That's the center point of the lights. So what it's gonna allow me to do with these lights here and all of them in the ceiling is to be able to light the room perfectly. Absolutely make it as bright as can be. You can never have too much light when you're doing your body work. You can see things so much better. So this is a perfect room. It's separated from the rest of the building. We can clean it and sweep it every night. We have a dustless sanding system coming in. It'll be climate controlled and we'll stop all the filler sanding that's going on throughout the rest of the building. With a body shop in crunch mode, Dave and Alyssa take a minute to install the Dynamat and carpet in Buck 71 Challenger RT, paving the way for the installation of its heater box and dash. They need to get as much done as they can before the Firepower CUDA makes it into assembly. I just got the uh, heater box put in, which is slash air conditioning uh, unit into the car. Getting ready to build out the dashboard on the car as well. So I gotta have all that stuff in place before I can actually install the dash. Will finally uh, laid out all the paint on our dashboard frame. So our new dash pad came in along with uh, some of the other wiring components that we needed. And so right now we're just gonna basically reassemble our dashboard, test our gauges, make sure all the gauges look good once all our wiring's in place, and then hopefully get the dashboard installed in the car. Uh, this 71 Challenger dash uh, was a really beautiful original dash. It's an original owner car. Uh, we didn't send this one out to Instrument Specialties because it was in such good condition. So we're basically, I just stripped it all down, uh, had it repainted, and then we're reconditioning, you know, all the, the dash gauges and everything, all the instrument cluster, and then uh, replacing any wiring that was bad, uh, which for this case, none of it was bad, but anything that looks kind of iffy, we're going to replace and uh, reinstall back in here. But it's pretty uh, straightforward. Uh, everything should go into place, you know, just as well as it, it came apart. And the cool thing is I'm using all the original components that came off this dash. So nothing was broken, nothing was cracked. The only thing we're going to do is uh, install a new aftermarket radio in the dash uh, for the owner because he, uh, he doesn't want the original stock radio in it. He had an aftermarket in there and it was a little outdated because it was a cassette tape. So we're going to put a CD player in there for him and kind of update him a little bit with a Bluetooth setup. This is going to be his daily driver. He wants to go out and cruise it around. So he can enjoy some tunes while he's out driving around. Yeah, got her all lit up inside. Every one of those is on a, on a different switch panel. Got electric reel, hose reels over there. Everything's, everything's powered up, bright. And I think he was really, uh, I think he was happy and surprised at his little treat. I hate to break it to him, but I've actually been out here for about two weeks now. You'll be able to work out here uninterrupted. Correct. You can make all the mess in the world and it doesn't affect anything outside. Right. But you'll clean it up every night. Every night. This will be your little world. You'll be the big fish in this pond. This is your pond. Okay. okay? You see one of those other guys swimming in here, you stop them at the door. Okay. That's my pond. 
I'm the big fish that runs this pond. Okay. You give them the rules. You don't want them out here BSing with you. You don't want them stopping you. If they're coming out here to work on a car, they come out to work on a car. Okay. Respect, R-E-S-P-E-C-T. That is what I have for thee. I appreciate it. Thank you. Who's the, uh, who's the dream maker? If you had to guess. If I had to guess, kind of stretching out there, I'd say you. Okay. Congratulations on your new room. Awesome, thank you, sir. You're very welcome. All right. I think Got everybody's gonna be pretty, pretty happy with that. I think he's pretty excited, you know what I'm saying? Nice hair, by the way. All right, how about that? Okay, yeah, um, you know, it's not really anything new. I've been out here for a couple weeks, so we'll just kind of let Mark keep going with it, that this was his big surprise for me today. Yeah, why, why I take somebody, why I take somebody out, show them a room that they already seen, you know? Yeah, I took him out and showed them a room he's already seen. What I got here is our heater box for our firepower car. Uh, it's just basically a, a standard E-body uh, heater box. Uh, this one went really well. We had a really good core. And so it was really easy to restore this one. Didn't have to put a whole lot of new parts. It was just basically taking it apart, going through it, cleaning it up, put all the new gaskets and seals in there and putting it back together. Yeah, so right now, uh, after I get this heater box done, all we really have to do is put the dashboard in. Uh, dashboard came fantastic. Uh, but then it got me thinking, you know, I was back there in the body shop and I noticed that those guys were welding torque boxes in the car. Uh, being that the 71 Cuda was originally a 318 car, uh, whenever you put torque boxes in, they go up in the corners of the frame rails to stiffen it up around the leaf spring and around the front uh, subframe assembly. And so all the E-body Cudas and, and Challengers back in the day that got torque boxes were either a 440 or bigger engine. So this could be a 446 barrel or a 426 Hemi. So I'm pretty excited uh, to find out exactly what engine we're putting in this car. Yeah, I've been trying to bug Mark about it a little bit and he's, he's tight as a trap. He won't uh, let anything go on it. So. Uh, we'll have to wait and see what he, what he turns up with. Not knowing what's going on next, I just work on the heater box. I'll get that done, get that put in the car, get the dashboard put in the car, and then uh, hopefully uh, get the thumbs up for the engine and transmission. Whenever we get all that stuff put in the car, we'll find out uh, exactly what engine we're putting in this because I'm super excited. I want to find out uh, what this car's going to have in it. Oh, uh, there's trouble. What are you guys doing? Uh, Wait a minute. What? Where is this car at, process-wise? Why are you both working shop. on it? Shop. Because we tag team a lot of things together. This really? just happens to be one of them. Mark first unveiled Operation Firepower to the ghouls as his own unremarkable 71318 CUDA. When a mystery client requested Mark for a super secretive project, the ghouls were shocked to learn that not only did they need to drop everything they're working on to restore this car, but that it needed to be showroom ready in only four months, making it one of the fastest builds in graveyard cars history. Returning from the Dipper, the ghouls banded together and finished the Cuda's bodywork in record time. With all hands on deck, the ghouls can only theorize what this 1971 Cuda's true purpose is. That's well, there's right. something I can do to help yes. you guys out? Now yeah. we're ready. Heck yeah. We got you a, such a uh, good negative job attitude over here. How do you do this all day? I said yes. I figured you do such a good job at polishing stuff that you could grab the grinder wheel and start polishing that roof. See how it's got all the crud on it? You want her to scuff the inside of this? No, I, no, I want to take the grinder wheel of that roof. See the oh, roof? Here. Oh, yeah. inside, inside the car. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. But this time you don't uh, have to be hunched over George. Oh, well, gee, thank you so much. See? You're welcome. God. Will just likes to kind of give everybody <laughs> until it's, you know, the ball's in his court. So, yeah, so you can start detailing the inside, the whole roof, all that in there. Get that like you did the body. Okay. Kind of kind of nice to have her out here. So that way she can, you know, get some experience in. She likes to, you know, she likes to help out. I feel like she's contributed to everything. She's very good at polishing the metal. She gets the metal. She, she's very, when you give her a task, like, hey, make this super shiny and make it perfect, she does a very good job at that. So that is one area she, she really excels in. So I got no problems with that. And the inside of the roof, we don't do body work. So basically she'll go in there, polish the whole inside of the car, 
then I'll go in there, seal it, and shoot it. So it is a big help. All right, go, Alyssa, go. While Alyssa, Will, and Josh grind away at the Firepower Cuda, room is made in the assembly shop to install the dash into Buck 71 383 Challenger RT. The ghouls know that once the Firepower Cuda is painted, all other cars will be sidelined. How goes it? How you doing? Good, yeah, I think it's done. Done? Nice. How's it looking? Looks good. You want to walk a deck lid? Yeah. To get out of this rust pit? Definitely. Right on. Uh, I don't know how my dad does it. It's as old as he is getting in and out of these. He's a lot shorter though too. <laughs> so he doesn't have to actually bend oh. as far. You can uh, pull your mask off if you want. Okay. Um, the primer's not too dusty as long as you're not making a big cloud. So I set you up with the block already. Um, have you blocked before? No. No. Well, it Will count. said he gave you like a crash course kind of, mm. but it didn't work out as well. It's well, no. Gotcha. So the trick is it's, it doesn't slide on your sawhorse. So as you're you know, blocking it out, it's not gonna slide on you. And the biggest thing is, is keep your block flat. Try not to tilt it and don't pick it up and then put it down, kind of do like that or anything. And it's cross hatch. So go a couple strokes, a couple strokes and try and go full lengths. So you go from one end all the way over and down. How I do it is I'll do one motion all the way down then I'll come back the other way. Okay. So you cross hatch this way, back this way, and you're gonna go until, so you can kind of see it's like a fingerprint and you see all the lines and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be all smooth, one solid light gray color. So you're just gonna kind of all the way. And it's okay to let this come off the edge. Try not to tilt it. So keep more on this side than this. You go like that, you're gonna cut your edge at an angle. Okay. Definitely a tedious job. just start setting them out here so we can see everything at a glance. I want to put all the smaller stuff down here, the bags of the bolts and the nuts and the, all the craziness, which I don't understand any of it. So today what we're going to do is take all the pieces that we've gotten in for the car, get them laid out. There's some of them, I'll be honest, I don't even know what they are. This is a new world for me. This is a different type of climate for the old Wilbur, all right? I call myself the Wilbur because Welby was my nickname and they always said the Wilbur. You know what I think? As crazy as it sounds, I think that's a throw out bearing. It is. Well, that's a slave cylinder, hand bearing. That's, an, that's a slave cylinder? Yeah, when you step on the clutch. Gosh. <laughs> oh, look at that. What do we got? Oh, ho, 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 ho. Ha, 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 ha. Asante, ma sur. <laughs> Operation Firepower. This is our 71 Cuda. Uh, I and the people who I'm working with are the only ones that know anything about this. The guys that are working on the car know that we have a car that has to be done by a certain time, but they don't know why, and they certainly don't know what it is. So he real. really didn't tell anybody then? No. Um, I think the person with the most information is going to be our buddy Will. You, know, you think Will knows more than I Mike? think Will knows more than he lets on to know. And yeah. I think maybe Dave would know. I don't think Dave does, though. He was told at the same time I was. Oh, so unless okay. my dad filled him in a little bit more, I don't think he knows. Gotcha. Yeah, he's in a different part of the shop, so I really don't see Dave much. With a dash installed into Buck 71 Challenger RT, the window installers allow Dave a little free time to show you how to restore your dash at home. Uh, what we basically have here is a 1971 uh, Dodge Challenger Rally Cluster. Uh, we've been having issues with the clocks in these clusters. We're going to kind of show you how you can kind of troubleshoot it yourself and hopefully fix it yourself. So you can see I'm in total geek mode. I got my glasses on. Right now you can see the, the, the clock's been taken out of the cluster. It's not real difficult uh, for you folks that uh, want to try this at home, but if you kind of look here, it basically just goes in like this here. There's just three screws in there that you take out and then the whole clock mechanism will come right out of there. You just kind of turn it a little bit and boom, it comes right out. That's pretty easy. Do you notice how Will's not wearing his hat? Yeah, his, uh, days. his fancy farmer hat. I know. I'm not going to I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of happy it's gone. But you didn't like the hat? No. You were sporting it out there the other day in your beekeeper not outfit. Out of 
choice. Uh, sure. I had to go kill some bees. It was for safety. Right, there you go. I just, I like to wear the straw hats because I have a lot of hair. It's one of the few hats that actually holds my hair down. Yes, people at home send hats in. I'll try it, whatever, as long as it doesn't have a feather in it. Then I'll be good to go. No feathers, no ruffles, but outside of that, we're good. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to do a couple things to Will and get him back, though. I mean, it's like weird to see him without a hat on, though. I feel like we need to get him replacement hats. Yeah, we could do that. Maybe a different you hat for every his... day. Oh, there we go. That's a great idea. Will really messed up when he put us together on a team today yeah. and left. Well, after we get done here, I'm gonna see if I can get any more information out of my dad about firepower. Yeah, that'd be good. He'd probably talk to you more than anybody, being his daughter and all. No? No. No? no. When they get into your clock, if it's not working, uh, if yours looks destroyed like this here, you can actually buy a decal set that'll replace that face and everything, so don't be scared if, uh, if it looks like this. What we're gonna do is kind of show you how to take it apart. We ended up doing an older one first to kind of get the feel for it before we went to this new one. On these little tabs right here, you can kind of see if you can take a pick, and I use a little pick and just kind of put it behind there and bend the tabs back. Once you get all these tabs bent back, this whole piece comes apart. And it comes apart, it looks really complicated. The gears in here get a little gummed up and they kind of stick. So we took a little bit of WD-40, kind of shot it around the gears into where they started to move actually kind of freely. Okay, so it's looking good, except yep. for this spot over here still, it just seems... A little bit lower, right. Mm -hmm. and so just it's keep so, at it, or? Yeah, you would just keep going until, because I mean, you still got a lot of shiny spots in here, and you want to get rid of all the shiny. You want it that like matte gray, no gloss. And then when you run your hand over it, you can feel like all those, kind of like it's an orange peely. You want it just to be smooth. I think Josh is a great teacher. I feel like I picked up really well on blocking this time. Oh, shit. Sure. But, in Will's defense, you know, sometimes when, like, when I come out and ask to do something, he doesn't take me seriously, and he kind of, like, shrugs it off or has me dress up or whatever, and, you know, ends up being more fun than work. Well, it's kind of the same thing. I think that day when I came out here, I kind of had an attitude where I wasn't taking him real serious because he messes with me so much. So I think I, yeah, I don't think I was paying super close attention that day. I kind of had enough of, of Will at that moment. So, I get those days. in his defense, you know, I don't think he's a bad teacher, but I definitely picked up blocking the way that you taught me, um, yeah. the way that you explain things. I mean, it was really clear. It was easy to understand. So nice. I well, appreciate that. Glad it worked. If you kind of look in here, I'm going to kind of put power to this and show it to you. It doesn't run on a full 12 volts, or the clock doesn't. What it has in here, and you guys familiar with a point set uh, in a distributor, what you have here is a set of contact points you can kind of see right there. And I'm gonna kind of put power to this thing. And you'll see, once we put power to this, it's gonna snap that set of points right there back. And in a sense, it's gonna wind the clock. And you see that thing pop back. And what happens is that thing winds and you can actually take power away from it. And you'll see, it'll just keep clicking. So that second hand's gonna spin around and it'll keep going until that set of points winds back down. And then as soon as that point hits again, it charges it, snaps it back, and in a sense winds the clock back up, and it starts moving again. So the only time you need power on that thing is when that set of points comes down. So our contact points were dirty, so it's just like cleaning a set of points in a car. You could take an emery board, put it in there, clean up those contact points, put a little WD-40, little lubricant in there, and uh, free up those gears, and lo and behold, our clock started working just perfectly. So there's a little tip for you guys if uh, you don't want to spend that ton of money, which they are really expensive to replace these clocks, you could try fixing it yourself. Hopefully it works out for you and uh, yeah, see what happens. And as soon as we get that, I'm gonna go round up the rest of the team, bring hey them in for the big announcement. Hey, what's up? No, go. Oh God, what no, happened? We're not, we're not ready for you. No, no, no. Wait, what's going on? Uh, uh, ah, ah, ah. No. <laughs> Put your crazy Nadine cross eyes. You don't need to know what's anything. What's going on? Hey, Mike. Oh, here. Friend. Here, let me lift the cat out of the bag. Now you know. What is that? That's my point. What is that? 
Would you do me a favor and go round up the rest of the team, have them out in the assembly room in a couple of minutes. I'm going to go get them, bring them in, and discuss with you what could be the biggest moment in the history of graveyard cars. So, firepower? God knows I don't like to be theatrical over the top. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> yeah, not you. Like, it's not like we're going to bring a big curtain out, you know, and unveil it like the Great Oz. Can you go get the guys? Sure. This is not for I you just... tonight. This I'm is, excited. This is enough for you. This is like Cousin Vinny. You don't, don't, don't read this, okay? Do me a favor, don't read this. Go. Okay, so wait, are we coming in here with the guys? Or? You're gonna stop out there and I'm gonna go get them as soon as we're finished and open up packages. Okay. Nadine. Good, Harold. You know, Harold, we're damned. That's the other line that Nadine hate has in the stand, so. Hey! Perfect timing! A good time. Hey, there you go. Dad has to show us in the engine yeah. room. Yep. And this one, two, four, six. You ready 12. for everybody, Dad? 12 oil filters. You got them? Yep. All right. Can we come in? Yeah. I'm a, no, I'm going to come out there. I'm going to come wait, out there. Wait, Oh, my God. God hey, sorry, guys. Nature. I guess we got to wait out here. We don't hear. I what's, don't know. What's he doing in there? Why, why, why you got to be like that? Why you got to be like that? So there. He's not yeah. going to be <laughs> naked when we walk in, is he? Oh, God. No, I'm just trying to have a big reveal. This is this is big stuff. This is monumental. Oh, I'm sure you've seen him naked a few times, Rollo. <laughs> well, yeah, that was back in high school. Yeah. In the locker room. <laughs> I got Big Mike over here ready, you know. You're figuring some things out, ain't you, a yeah, little I, bit? Yeah, I've got it figured out. Oh, Mickey's got it figured out. Well, we'll just see if you got it figured out. Everybody was naked in the locker room at yeah. one time. Uh, I know. Whenever I went to high school, too, it was the same way. And go get the boys. All right. Go get the boys. Let's go. The boys and the girl. And showers in the you locker room. Sounds a little creepy. For me. You yeah, guys saw each other naked? School, huh? yeah. You guys saw each other naked a lot? Yeah, in the locker school? room. No? Yeah, junior high. Locker room. Me, chief. Yeah. You were there, buddy. <laughs> no, I never did dress You were out there down. parading in front of... I never did? dressed down. I'm not going to dress down in front of a bunch of guys in the locker room. I wore my street clothes into the gym. Fryback was always mad at me. You got to dress down or go home. <laughs> Adios. You like taking your yeah. clothes off in front of a bunch of guys? Well, something I like not to my do, favorite thank you. thing at all. Can we get back on topic and stop thinking about the locker room? Those are my happiest days of his life. <laughs> Mike and I have been working on putting some pieces and parts away that have come in. You know that we have a car that has to be done by the end of October, yeah. but you don't know why. So what I want to do is bring you in here and show you why. This is it. Now, what we're about to find out is absolutely top secret. So you can't do your Instagram. Who are you? None of that's going to work. <laughs> Who are you All referencing right. to right I now? I know what you're going to do. You're going to do the whole thing. Here I am with Bob. No! <laughs> <laughs> and you handle a secret. I don't have Instagram. You don't have Instagram. Okay. I think you got lost in the background. Any <laughs> social media. It doesn't have to be that. <laughs> Facebook, <laughs> Twitter, you got <laughs> chat. What? I do. I got Snapchat. Snapchat. Okay, That's I didn't I know what it was. Anyway, come on in. Make I like his duck face, by the way. That was, pretty, that was pretty good. Uh, this is it. You know, this is the thing I've been waiting to share with everybody. The big the big secret, Operation Firepower. And, and just so you know, Firepower was the name of the first generation Hemi. That's why I opted to go with it. I know some of the guys were kind of getting close dialing that in and Dave may have guessed it on the head that I didn't let it out. Uh, yeah, this is the surprise that these guys have never had an opportunity to work on this kind of stuff. It's outside the box of what we normally do. So I know that everybody's gonna enjoy this as much as I do. I'm surrounded by great guys to help me put it in and to do it uh, and great vendors. So uh, very exciting. This crate, came to us from the Mopar division of Chrysler. The box that I'm gonna open uh, with the rest of the team that, that's here beside me, it is the, we'll call it a magic box, like Will's magic hat, right? Um, there's a lot happening inside there that needs to get out. Remember when Frosty? Frosty wanted to go and play all over in the snow. I say Frosty because if you put a little bit of a lisp with it, it even sounds more kid-like, right? Frosty the snowman. Remember when Frosty was floating around, everything was great, right? And it was cold and all his snow was intact and his limbs were all there and he had the carrot beak and all that stuff. And then the sun came out, right? And he lost his magic hat and he melted. There was a question now. This has a 392 Hemi inside of it. 
This is a brand new 392 Hemi, which is the exact same engine that my shaker car has in it, all right? What they've done is they've created a wiring harness and a computer that's pre-OBD2, I think they said, so it doesn't even use the downstream catalytic converters, it's pre-cast stuff that'll bolt onto this thing and you can run it in anything. If you want to put it in a Volkswagen Bug, you could. This is a particularly exciting project for me. We work on a lot of Mopars, some great stuff. We're not the first people to put one of those engines in one of the old cars. People do that the minute the new engines come out, they want to put them in the old cars. So it was Chevy, Ford, Dodge, everybody's doing that kind of a thing. Prior to this new control unit that Mopar's making, if I wanted to put that 392 Hemi in our 71 Cuda, I would have had to go out to a wrecking yard and find a wreck car, pull all the wiring out of it, and then slowly, systematically, probably going crazy, try to figure out what leads would have gone to what on the engine, what leads going somewhere we don't need, figure out if they need grounded, if they should be open circuits. So it's a, it was a massive, massive undertaking before to do this. So Mopar decides we want to sell more crate engines. We want to help our fans, our, our true blue fans with the older cars, be able to put our crate engines in easier so they come out with this beautiful control unit. And by the way, mm -hmm. the president of Mopar will be out here in one week from now to discuss this. That's yeah. Crazy. So that's cool. Yeah. Wants to kind of chill with me a little bit, I guess. I mean, that's huge. I'm so proud of my dad and everything that the crews accomplished for us to proud be able to- Proud of your to... dad that he got a phone call? Yeah, I mean, he's worked he took that phone call 15 well. years for this phone call. 15? I mean, at least, if not more. We're just a little tiny shop in Springfield, Oregon, and we're being 30, recognized. 30,000 square feet. Negative Nancy, what do you think? It's not negative, I just made no sense. The show's been on for the past six years. We are the number one Mopar shop in the world. We have a huge shop here. Yes, it is in Springfield, whatever. We do have the ducks. But we're still number one in all those categories. So it's more than more like, it's about time they called us and said, hey, will you do this for us? 392 cubic inch, bad boy, bad boy, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when I come for you? All right. Well, look at that. There you go. What's wrong with that? Yeah. <laughs> then we can actually see it. Don't forget to all of this, and that's SEMA. Royal and I went last year, first time ever, amazing, amazing event. This year, we're taking the car down to SEMA, and it's gonna be unveiled at the Mopar booth. I mean, this is like the epitome of anything I could have hoped for or dreamed about for somebody who's loved Mopar cars his whole life to be able to end up down there and share with the world that Mopar's still making great stuff, but more importantly, that Graveyard Cars is malleable. Yeah. Well, you guys get to go to Vegas. But we're not supposed to act too excited about that. Right? Oh, we're not supposed to say we're going to Vegas? Are you going to Vegas? We got to Yeah, we're going to yard. Vegas. I'm going to Vegas. It's not up, it's the not, car's going to Vegas, I'm going to I'm Vegas. I'm going to Vegas. That's so here's the thing. Ron Jenkins, Joe Dirt himself, from Magnum Force, who helped us with the, uh, <laughs> remember him? He's not the, Joe Dirt, he's just he, like a, No, the no. rumor on the street is Joe Dirt was based on him. Yeah, you've, you've met Ron from Magnum Force, haven't you? Yeah, oh, he came yeah. up and helped us put that uh, suspension, front and rear suspension in uh, Mark and Alina Scuda. Okay. He was thrilled when I told him that I've got the, that they're going to be coming out with the software to be able to show to be able to run these engines in the old cars because they've been accumulating things trying to get it where it will run. Now they won't have to. They'll just get this soft with this yeah. wiring harness and software. So put it right in. Nice thing about the new technology is it's it's easy. I mean it's plug and play. But the problem is is that you're putting new technology into a 49 year old car. Yeah. 60 yeah. days. When I say there is no tomorrow, there no, is there ain't no, no tomorrow at all. We got to put it. That's the first time it. that actually makes sense. Hopefully, we're all cooperative with that. So it's exciting. We got lots to do. Uh, as soon as we get this thing down into the car, we can start figuring out all those provisions for it. Everybody knows their task. You got to make awesome the magic car. happen. Yeah. You got your hat? We need your hat. Have you seen him in that magic hat? I've seen him in the magic hat. It's amazing. Hat. Magic man. I need to get magic me. Oh, yeah, that's amazing. I saw him floating like a Pac-Man ghost one day, and he, it was because he had that hat on. He was just, just floating around. Huh? Just floating, right? That's awesome. Yeah, took the hat off. Right to the ground. Just like that. <laughs> We're going to show him how it's done, show him the easy way to do Maybe it. Maybe I should right? ask for one for my Jeep Wrangler. Put a Hellcat in your Jeep? That'd be awesome. Oh, <laughs> <hey>. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Let's hit this mother bear.
Let's hit the gate doing 98, saying let them truckers roll 10-4, because we got a great big convoy. So I'm gonna have the car tomorrow, right, Well, Well, you get today. I'm really excited, you know, we only have the 60 days, it's time to get going on it right now. We're wasting time, so let's go. Well, <laughs> this was kind of sprung on me last moment. Uh, I got to get my kids uh, from school. There's no tomorrow? Well, there's tomorrow. You just said there was no tomorrow. Well, there's no tomorrow. That was in here. That's, yeah, you gotta make them feel good, but my kids gotta be picked up, we got sports, but uh, we're gonna hit it hard tomorrow. So, go wow. team, and uh, I'll see you in the morning. Hey, Will. What's happening, brother? Hey, look nice. Got all our seat frames all painted for the fire power car. I like to kind of keep up on the body shop because that's the car I'm waiting for. I'm trying to get everything uh, prepared. Do we have to call it firepower still? That's stupid. Yeah, I know. I like SEMA car SEMA better. SEMA cars better. Yeah. No more firepower. Yeah. Operation firepower. Yes. This is looking good. Is this the, the hood for the SEMA car? Yeah. Get it all the body works done. And then we uh, 180 this, so now I'm just 320 in it. They're doing great. Our body shop's really moving that, that car through the body. I mean, it needed a lot of work. And uh, they did a fantastic job like they always do. I was thinking about like this here, when, once the engine's in there, if it's a little bit off, we might have to modify the hood. So I no, know. No, because the hood's getting final paint tomorrow. <laughs> it's it's so, gonna be a great uh, Yeah, so yeah. there's no modifying anything. Yeah. If anything, you guys will have to adjust motor mounts or shit like that. Yeah. But yeah. hood, uh, once it's painted, it's not. We don't have time to go back and fix anything. I'm kind of concerned about the uh, shaker bubble. So we got a standard, you know, six barrel hood that's going to go on the 71 Cuda. And then we're putting that 2017 392 Hemi uh, shaker bubble on there. Cool. Why don't you go get the shaker bubble? And I'll, do put that? The, I'll put this, uh, this ring on so we can see what we're looking at. Yeah, let me go grab it. I'll find Mike and see where he hit it. Shaker bubble. Whoop. I got my new shaker bubble hat. Hey, that would be a cool hat for you, a shaker bubble hat like that. What do you think? Just kind of looking at it like that. Oh, f around. I don't know that looks. Oh, it comes up from the bottom now. Yeah, but it's definitely wider though, huh? Here, let's see if I can kind of. Oh, there we go. Let's try to. Go ahead and set it down and see if it'll stick in there. Slide it. What do you think? Um. Does it look hideous, like it's not even close? Uh, <laughs> hey, dude. That's not even in there. Here, go ahead and come on out, Dave, I got it. All right. You got the bubble? Yeah. All right. Oh, man, that's not even close, huh? Yeah, look how it's way short in the front, way short in the back. Well, maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's some concern with the shaker bubble fitting. Uh, it looks a little bit smaller than an original 1971 style does. So I was just kind of concerned that, you know, Will's getting ready to put paint on this hood. And I'm like, well, is that such a good idea if we got to modify this hood? But, uh, I do, um, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be short one way or another, huh? Here, you ready? I'll pull that sucker out of there. Yeah. So I guess we better ask Mark. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this would be easy to fix here, but it's just this void in the front, you know? That's why we got good body guys, man. Lights. I don't know why. <sighs> hey, what you doing? Make yourself at home. I don't care if you're covered in Bondo dust. Just sit down. They're, they're new. They're resilient. Good. Busy? I think Will's got the right idea. It's just going with the factory original shaker bubble for this style of six pack hood. All right, Dave, we're good. We good? He had them just send everything because he wasn't sure what modifications would have to be made. Yeah. So we're gonna use this base plate and then take an actual 71 shaker and put it on there. Mount them together. Awesome. And then probably just go back, repaint it. If we have to fiberglass it, whatever needs to be done. But it'll, the top will be a 71 shaker. Oh, perfect. Well, that's awesome. That's gonna look cool seeing some color on that. Well, I'm gonna go put this in my truck. What? No, I don't want. I don't want to see some <laughs> box dart coming in, in the next two weeks with a shaker on it. <laughs> Sweet, <laughs> can't just come home. What are you? 
You don't just come in, shut the, everything down, and just come in here. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it, it's done. But can we at least wait till it's dry? It, it, no, it's not. It, no, 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 no. Can we do the let 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 the hood dry? Once it's dry, you guys can bring your cameras in here and film it. We have it. We had the extra time on the on the hood and deck lid, so. The hood looked blocked out really nice yesterday, so it was one of those things, let's go ahead and just paint it. If it had any little issues or anything like that, we can just consider it a pre-paint, but the hood came out great, so I'll let it sit for about a week, and I can go ahead and get the cut and buff done on it, and then get it over there waiting for Dave. So I'm trying to get as many parts and pieces I can done now, so that way, uh, by the time this rolls to see when the car is actually cured and dried and not painted the night before. Uh, the paint shop always gets done. It's every other department that slows us down. This car will be done on my end without a problem. If you don't have constant air movement over something that's freshly painted, it'll solve and pop. No, we don't want it to solve and pop. So I like to keep the air going on it and let it just take its time, do its thing. Okay, will you guys get the f out of here? Oh, sorry, you can't say f I can't, okay, I use then? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. You very talented um, camera crew, audio boy, if you guys would just go and then I can get, and turn the booth back on on your way out, that would be great. Thank you. I'm sorry, what? In case you were hypnotized by Mark's Frosty the Snowman story, here's what happened this week at the graveyard. Dave was able to finish the carpet, dash, and windshield install on Bucks. 383 Challenger RT. Alyssa hulaed her way along, getting the Firepower Cuda ready for Will to paint. And Mark gathered the team to reveal the Firepower's true nature. A brand new plug and play 392 Crate Hemi. This car will be the first of its kind and usher in a new era of Mopar modification. Now, it's up to Will to get Mark's blessing on the Cuda's bodywork so he can get it into paint as fast as possible. Okay, the 71 Cuda's done. How is that physically possible? See, I mean, I'm not complaining. Who all worked on it? Mainly Josh. But Josh, Ryan, George, and myself, and Alyssa. Huh. A month isn't bad turnaround time for a complete body. Right. So you're ready to paint? We're ready for you to cut the floor so then we can start doing our jam work and blow the car apart. You ever heard of a team system, a team house? They take complete teams and put them on one car, knock the car out that would normally take two weeks in two days. Well, we got that car done. We got it back from the dipper, the metal work, body work, and all the primer work done in right, like 32 days. We're going to a team. We're going to a team system. We're gonna try it. Right here, right now? I don't think that's bad at all. Well, what's the downside to it? If you got three guys or four guys working on one car, and say it takes them a month, okay, but they're completely done in a month with it, and it's over to you. Right. Those three or four guys knock the next car out. That's two in two months. Three in three months, you follow the math, right? Right. That's 12 a year. Right. Don't say anything to them. Okay. I'm gonna have a meeting with the guys, and I'm gonna try implementing a team system. I think that's a great idea. You can come out and get started. Uh, Mark told me not to tell anybody yet. I think he's still kicking it around, making sure that's the right move to make. And uh, when he's ready, he'll come out, hold a team meeting with everyone, and uh, let them know what the plan is. But in the meantime, he didn't want me to say anything to anybody until he's for sure that's the way he wants to go. All right, guys, just talked with Mark. We're gonna change things up a bit. I have a big announcement, and here's what we're gonna do from this point forward. <laughs>